Governor, what does the stopgap budget do for Illinoisans who rely on the services of the state or uh, other state-supported entities, including schools? Yeah, so let's talk about that. Um, last week's uh, bipartisan stopgap agreement was a good step in the right direction. It's not the long-term solution of a truly balanced budget with reforms to grow more jobs and protect taxpayers, but it's a step to get to that ultimate good goal. So we accomplished three things. First, um, we got a spending level that is much lower than what Speaker Madigan's majority tried to pass. They tried to jam through a $7 billion out of balance deficit spending plan. Um, we were able to stop that. That would have uh, been completely unaffordable and would have ne necessitated a big tax hike uh, to fund that. So that was a good victory for taxpayers. Um, why, and we got a spending so that we can have uh, essential human services, essential public safety, uh, corrections, and government operations continue to function through the next six months. So that's a good step. Secondly, we got schools open on time with an affordable amount more money. Uh, that was a, uh, a great step forward. Um, Speaker Madigan's majority has cut school funding four times in the last ten years. They've used it as a political football for other agenda items for them. And I've said last year I want more money for schools. Um, and I wanted more money this year. This year we got a full foundation level as well as some more money for low-income schools, so uh, poverty, uh, through a poverty grant. That was great. And we were able to do that without having to bail out the city of Chicago's schools. Um, Speaker Madigan's majority was demanding a half a billion dollars more um, to Chicago public schools because that's been so financially mismanaged up there. We said, no, that's not fair to the taxpayers in Metro East, in Belleville, or East St. Louis, or Rockford, or Decatur, or Danville. We need all schools to get some more money on a proportionate basis. Chicago shouldn't get special treatment. And we were victorious in that outcome. Uh, Chicago is getting a little bit more money, but all school districts are getting more money on a proportionate basis. So that's good for teachers, students, and we protected taxpayers, so that was good. And then the third accomplishment from the agreement is we got pension reform front and center on the table with incentives for Speaker Madigan's majority to vote for pension reform. They don't want to do pension reform, but um, we passed a bipartisan pension parity bill for teachers' pensions, and it will only become law if we reform all pensions in the state of Illinois on a more affordable basis. We can save taxpayers billions of dollars, and we have an agreement that that will happen by January. So that was a great step forward for taxpayers as well. And as I travel around Illinois here in Metro East and everywhere around the state, people come up to me and say, Governor, you're on the right track. Don't back down. Don't give in. Stay strong. And we are going to stay persistent. We got this stopgap spending plan done because we were finally able to persuade a significant number of Democrats who normally would just do what Speaker Madigan directs. They were, they were willing to stand up and say, we need reforms, we support much of the governor's proposals to fix our economy. They were, the bipartisan working groups were about to announce some major reforms for workers' comp um, cost reduction, for pension reform, for local control to bring down property taxes. Speaker Madigan said, no, don't announce that yet. Let's wait and, and vote on those issues after the general election. You, you're an observer of our state government. You know that the big votes, the big changes happen generally in the lame duck session after, ge after general elections, and that's what the Speaker wants to do again. I, I personally don't agree with that. I think we should do our jobs now. It shouldn't wait until after the election. We should vote now on reforms. But, um, you know, I've got to deal with the cards I've dealt. Speaker Madigan has a supermajority, so we've got, to, we've got to manage as best we can. Here, here, the critical issue in Illinois is we've been going down the wrong road for a long time. We've been losing jobs. We have fewer jobs than we had 17 years ago. We have lower family incomes than we had 17 years ago. We now have the highest property taxes in America and the most debt, uh, unfunded pensions and bonds of any state in America. We are in a bad condition. And this is going on for 30 years. Speaker Madigan's controlled the General Assembly spending for more than 30 years. And uh, prior to my becoming governor, we had two governors in office who were in the same political party as the speaker. They were competing with each other to see who could spend more and create more deficits. We, we bring an end to that mismanagement and that corruption and cronyism. So we've said to change the direction, we need to do three fundamental types of things. We need political reform, we need economic reform, and we need government reform. We need those three reforms. Political reform is essential. It's that, in some ways, it's the most important one. Democracy is not working in Illinois. We have a rigged system where we have, we basically have been a one-party state. Democracy doesn't work on a one-party basis. We've had Speaker Madigan with complete control of the General Assembly for more than 30 years. Um, and uh, we have had, uh, you know, a governor of the same party for a long time, and they've spent us into the brink of 
brink of insolvency. And uh, your, your readers may be interested, they may not know this. Here this uh, November in the election, two-thirds of the state races, there's no opponent. There's one person running. We have a rigged system. There's no competition. There's no choice for voters. Democracy doesn't work on that basis. It, it, we need competition and we need choices for voters, uh, for the people of the state. So we're asking for two types of reform. Redistricting reform so that we can have competitive general elections. We don't have gerrymandered districts. And that's overwhelmingly supported by the people of Illinois, Democrats and Republicans. This is popular and it's the right thing to do. Unfortunately, Speaker Madigan um, has his lawyer in court trying to block the voter referendum on, on um on redistricting and fair maps. I hope we can prevail in court. I'm asking the General Assembly to support the judges and, and pass term um, redistricting reform themselves to support the, uh, the outcome. So far, I haven't succeeded in that, but we need that referendum to pass. The second thing um, is we need term limits on elected officials. We, we in Illinois have suffered where many people in power get consolidated power, they make more money from their office, and they're, they're in power for decades. It's not right. We should, uh, government should be public service. We should work for a few years and then leave office. I'm going to term limit myself at eight years. I think everybody should serve no more than eight years. Uh, we got this on the. Uh, we tried to get it on the ballot through a voter referendum two years ago. I loved that effort. We collected the signatures. Speaker Madigan sued us in court. He won in court, unfortunately. And the, the outcome of that judicial decision is basically that the, the um, members of the General Assembly have to pass term limits themselves and to get it on the ballot. So we're going to put a big initiative on. We need your readers to know. We need to put pressure on members of the General Assembly. Vote to get term limits on the ballot. Let the voters decide themselves. Let people decide whether they want term limits or not. It would help restore democracy. So that's one thing, political reform. Secondly, government reform, two big things. That's reform our pension system so it's more affordable. But we need to protect the pensions of our hardworking state employees and local government employees or police and fire. We should not reduce their historically accrued benefits. That's not fair. But for future work, for current uh, employees and, and future ones, we should have other more affordable plans that they can choose among that we can save taxpayers money. If we do that, we can save taxpayers billions of dollars and, rest and restore economic uh, vitality for the state. The other thing we need to do is get more local control of the costs of government. Right now, Springfield puts all kinds of mandates on local governments, school districts, cities, counties. They, Springfield controls what can be bargained, how competitive bidding is done, how outside contracting is done. It should be up to each community. The communities that like the current system should keep it. If they need to change it, they should be empowered to change it. Local residents should have that power. That can bring down our property taxes, which are the highest in America. We need to bring them down. And then the final change, we need economic reform to grow more jobs. We should be one of the fastest growing states in America, but our regulations are hostile to business and we've been losing our jobs. Caterpillar told me that the workers' comp system in Illinois is so broken that for their, they're one of the best employers in America. They told us that workers' comp costs in Illinois five times as much uh, as in the states that they build their equipment in around America, and they've been moving their jobs out of Illinois for years. And they're not alone. Manufacturers all over Illinois have been leaving because of workers' comp costs. And workers' comp could not only bring more employers back by making us competitive, but it could save hundreds of millions of dollars for taxpayers because workers' comp costs are very high inside government as well as in business. So workers' comp uh, reform is the number one priority that we've got to change to bring more jobs back to Illinois. If we do these things, we can have a long-term balanced budget. Many times, um, Speaker Madigan's majority in the General Assembly says, Governor, give up on reforms. Don't do that. Just pass a budget. We'll deal with reforms later. We'll never have a balanced budget without reforms. And here's a, here's a simple fact for your, your readers to know. Um, if the economy doesn't grow as fast as government spending, you'll always have deficits or you'll always have to have higher taxes. That's just mathematically true. And Illinois' economy has been flatlining for years. We're one of the lowest growing states in America, while our government spending has been going up astronomically. And is, uh, the, real, uh, the real issue is if we had just been growing at the nation's average, just average growth among all the states, not one of the top 10 growers like we could be, but if we just grew at the nation's average over the last 15 years today, after 15 years of average growth, we would not have a budget deficit. We would not have needed any tax rate hikes. Uh, we would not have any unpaid bills. And we have $13 billion more in the state treasury to fund our human services, to fund our schools and our universities, and to give a tax rebate to our hardworking families. Economic growth is the key, and the reforms we're advocating are the key to that economic growth. Six months from now, we won't be in another budget. <laughs> still <made our laughs> That's, fair. That's a good question. The reason I'm cautiously optimistic is not because Speaker Madigan is changing. He's not. He's, he's entrenched. He's been the most powerful politician in Illinois for 35 years. 
he's not changing, but we're starting to convince members in his caucus to stand up to him and not just do what he tells them. Um, we, we had bipartisan working groups going all year long that we encouraged. They were working separate from me and separate from the speaker. They were coming up with bipartisan compromises on workers' comp, on pensions, on local control. And they were about to announce some breakthrough agreements. Speaker Madigan said, no, don't announce those, don't agree to those yet, wait until after the, the general election. And then, and then, uh, then uh, we all came to an agreement that the votes will happen after the general election. My concern is this election now really matters. It's hugely important. The simple fact is if Speaker Madigan gets more power, he's already got a super majority. If he, if he keeps that or extends that power more, the odds of getting reforms done go down and, and his power is, is just accelerated. And it would be, uh, heaven forbid, I mean, it will would, it would put taxpayers and business, uh, small business owners in a tough place. Flip side is if there's more balance created, if the people of Illinois support reformers and support reform, um, and there's more balance in the General Assembly where both parties have a more equal voice, well, I think we can get some great things done. Bipartisan compromise and good reforms to grow the economy and improve, improve uh, the family incomes in Illinois. You've used, just a couple more. Oh. You've used the term uh, Madigan's supermajority uh -huh. a few times now, and uh -huh. I've read that a few times over the last few days. Uh -huh. Is um, that a theme that we're going to be hearing um, a lot now that House elections are coming up in November. Well, it's it's just a simple fact. It's what what I have to deal with. I'm I'm uh, trying to work on a bipartisan basis. I'm I'm one person. The governor has a certain uh, strengths, but supermajority in the General Assembly they control what get, bills get called, what gets voted on, um, and the power of the Chicago political machine that Speaker Madigan runs. It's super powerful. One of the challenges we have in Illinois is Chicago Machine has pretty much run the state for Chicago's benefit. We're standing up to that. We're beginning to change it, but we've got to change it. We should be one state. Chicago shouldn't get preferential treatment. I work for the people in Chicago hard. I work for everybody there, but I work for everybody in Metro East. I work for everybody in Carbondale. We need to be one state and have the government working for everybody. You said you're willing to um, uh, go along with an income tax increase. Can you tell us, is there a cap that you would not be willing to exceed? Well, I'm an, I'm an anti-tax guy. I frankly not want to increase any taxes. I'd like to work them down over time. What I will work down over time is the property tax. That's our number one most uncompetitive tax. And that's what our reforms are designed to do, bring down our property taxes. That said, I, in the spirit of compromise with uh, Speaker Madigan and his majority, I, I've said I'm willing to consider some new revenues. I'm, I will consider that, and I'll, I'm open to it. But uh, only in the context of reforms to protect our... Uh, homeowners from more property tax hikes and only where we are make ourselves more competitive. We have got to grow our tax base. We've got to grow more jobs. Illinois is flatlining on economic performance. We'll never have balanced budgets if we don't if we don't reform. So I've said I'll look at some new taxes. I'll consider that, but it, only taxes where we can stay competitive and increase our competitiveness to bring more jobs to Illinois. Okay, one more. One more. <laughs> you, you've boasted about um, eight hundred million dollars in cuts that your administration yeah. has been able to make, yeah. um, and they've been to various programs like um, Medicaid, child care, state police vehicles, coal programs, agriculture programs, and you've called those um, the cuts in, um, they, that said they've been in wasteful spending. Do you consider those programs wasteful? Well, we've got uh, even another $700 million that we can cut. We have got to make government balanced and working for the people again. And we've been spending beyond what we can afford for decades. It's just not sustainable. No family in Illinois could keep spending what they don't have, like Illinois' government. Government's got to work for the people. Um, we have cut $800 million out of um, unnecessary spending. And um, we've two things I'm very proud of. We are now modernizing our IT system. Our, we, we in Illinois, many of the departments don't even have computers. We're living in the Stone Age. I walked into one department my first, uh, my second week in office, actually, 200 people in a room with paper applications on their desk, no computers. I said, this doesn't look efficient. I found out we could spend half a million dollars on a computer system, half a million, save seven million per year. That's going on all over the government. We are saving hundreds of millions of dollars by modernizing our IT. We either got to move away from paper uh, or we do, in some departments we have computers, but we're running software from 1974. I mean, that was a great year. That's when I got out of high school. You know, it's a good year, but software's changed a lot in the last you know, 40, 50 years, we can have productivity changes by modernizing. And the other thing I'm very proud of, and it's good for your, your readers to understand, 
We have put in new labor contracts with 18 of the unions that work inside state government that's transformative. You know, we, we have the highest paid state employees in America, which, you know, we could debate. Uh, I, I'm proud. We got great workers. I want them to be well paid. But they want three billion more than what they're making now based, based on seniority. We said no, that's not affordable, that's not fair to our taxpayers, but we said we will pay bonuses, we'll, we'll pay you more, we'll, we'll leave fl uh, salaries flat, but we'll pay bonuses, but let's do it based on productivity, let's, let's pay a bonus based upon a percentage of what you save taxpayers. Save a taxpayer a dollar, we'll give you 10 cents of that dollar. And you know what, a lot of the employees have said, yeah, I know how to save money, that's a win-win uh, for the employees and the taxpayers. Um, and 18 unions have signed up to that deal. That's transformative for Illinois. It'll save us a lot. It is uh, saving us a lot of money. Bad news is the largest union so far, the leaders have so said no to that. Their members, I think, they would ratify that new proposal if it could get to a vote. The leaders so far have said no. But we've got to stay strong. That, that, that's going to help transform uh, state government and save taxpayers a lot of money. Okay.